Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Barlow. Welcome to episode 2 of the VCE Biology Podcast. This episode covers part of Unit 1, Area of Study 1, and I'll be talking about cell structure, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, organelles, and microscopes. Now, Cells are the basic functional unit of living organisms, and biology is the study of living things. So if you're going to study biology, you've got to study cells. And that should start with the cell, cell theory. So the cell theory states that all organisms, so all living things, are composed of cells, and of course the products of cells, so the things that cells make. All cells come from pre-existing cells, so they don't just appear out of thin air and the cell is the smallest living organizational unit. So that's the cell theory. Now, of course, all cells actually have several things in common. All cells have an outer plasma membrane or cell membrane. So this keeps the contents of the cell separate from the external environment and also controls what goes into and out of the cell. All cells also contain uh, cytoplasm. So this is the jelly-like stuff inside the plasma membrane. It's got nutrients and salts and enzymes and all of the organelles floating in it, except for the nucleus. So it's kind of everything inside the plasma membrane apart from the nucleus. Uh, and the liquid part of the cytoplasm is called the cytosol. Uh, all cells have also got DNA inside them, and this is what controls the cell. So it contains the cell's genetic material, uh, and therefore it contains all the instructions um, needed to make the cell function uh, exactly how it's supposed to. So yeah, all cells have got a plasma membrane, they've all got cytoplasm, and they all contain uh, DNA. Um, and many cells have also got little extensions called uh, flagella or cilia, and they kind of flap around and help the cell move around. So that's some basic components of the cell. Now, there are two main types of cells. There are prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So prokaryotic cells all come from the kingdom and era. Uh, they're far smaller than eukaryotic cells. They've got no obvious structural organization and they've just got one single circular DNA chromosome. <clears throat> and really the key, one of the key, another key difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells is that prokaryotic cells do not have membrane-bound organelles and therefore also they don't have a membrane-bound nucleus. So eukaryotic cells do have membrane-bound organelles and you know so they're far bigger and more complex than prokaryotic cells. Now the particular characteristics that different cells have is actually a great way to classify them. So in classification there are five kingdoms of life. There's Monera, Protista, Fungi, Animalia, and Plantae. So the only organism, as we've just said, that fall into the kingdom Monera are prokaryotic cells. So that is, you know, single-celled, really small. Uh, they don't have membrane-bound nucleus or membrane-bound organelles inside them. Um, organelles, I didn't say before, they're subcellular structures that are involved in specific functions within the cell. So all the other kingdoms Protista, uh, Animalia, Fungi, and Plantae are made up of eukaryotic cells. So they've got a membrane-bound nucleus, and they've got organelles which are involved in specific functions. Um, and there are, in fact, lots of different types of organelles. <laughs> so now I'd like to run through some of the organelles which can be found in eukaryotic cells. So the most well-known one is probably the nucleus. So this is a fairly big organelle, which is surrounded by uh, the nuclear membrane, which is a double-layered membrane, and it contains DNA. So the nucleus is good because it's one of the best that you can see under a microscope because it stains well when you're preparing a microscope slide. Uh, it controls the cell, the nucleus. Another organelle is the mitochondria, so that's involved in energy transformations. It's the, you know, the powerhouse of the cell, and that's where cellular respiration takes place, which provides the cell with energy. Another organelle found in plant cells is a chloroplast. So chloroplasts are green because they've got a pigment in them called chlorophyll. And photosynthesis uh, actually takes place in chloroplasts. Another organelle is a, a ribosome. So these are tiny organelles. Uh, you can't see them with a light microscope. Uh, they're actually the sites of the production of proteins. So it's, it's where uh, protein synthesis takes place. Another organe uh, organelle is the endoplasmic reticulum, which can be smooth 
or rough. Uh, basically, rough endoplasmic reticulum has got ribosomes on it, and smooth endo smooth endoplasmic reticulum doesn't have ribosomes on it. Uh, so the endoplasmic reticulum uh, is kind of again involved in um, protein synthesis, and it's also involved with the production and processing and transport of materials like proteins within the cell. Another organelle is the Golgi apparatus. <clears throat> so this is again uh, involved in packaging of proteins into uh, little vesicles, and they can then be transported around the organism or out of the cell. Another organelle is a lysosome. So these are membrane-bound vesicles which contain uh, powerful digestive enzymes. So they're basically responsible for breaking down wastes, you know, debris and foreign material uh, in the cell. There's also another uh, organelle is a vacuole, which is a liquid-filled organelle. Lots of cells, particularly plant cells, um, they've got really big ones. They're filled with sap. So yeah, that's a vacuole. It's just uh, you know, a big organelle filled with fluid. And now we've already talked about this, but of course something that holds all of those things in the cell is the plasma membrane. You know, it surrounds the cell, keeps all the contents of the cell separate for the environment. It's actually composed of a phospholipid bilayer. So this means it's made of lipids or fats. Bilayer means, you know, two layers of fats. And so, yeah, it's a phospholipid bilayer, but it's actually also got embedded proteins and some carbohydrate chains poking out of it, uh, as well as some cholesterol molecules in it for uh, you know, structure and stability. So that's the plasma membrane, which holds all those organelles all inside the cell. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, well, that all sounds really great, Mr. Barlow, but how do you know all this stuff? How have scientists been able to prove that little tiny cells have got these even tinier things in them called organelles? Well, I'm glad you asked, because the answer is microscopes. And there are a few different main types of microscopes. The first one is a light microscope. And that's probably what you're going to use in your biology labs or practical tasks. So you can see live specimens with a microscope, so that's really handy. And using a light microscope, you can see things which are you know, micrometer to millimeters in size, so fairly small things. Light microscopes are also good because you can dye or, or you can stain your samples. So, you know, for example, you can stain the nucleus of a cell, so that'll come up really well when you see it in the mic under a microscope. But the problem is you can't see really, really minute, precise detail with a light microscope. If you want to see really, really small things, you need to use an electron microscope. So electron microscopes shoot electron beams instead of light at the sample, and you can see superb detail, you know, things which are nanometers in size. Uh, a problem with using an electron microscope is that the sample has to be dead before you can see it. So you have to prepare it uh, and you have to kill it um, so you can see it. But hey, you can see things which are really small and that's really good. Um, another new type of technology uh, relatively new is something which called which is called a synchrotron. So a synchrotron actually just generates a really intense kind of special light, and biologists use this special light to see really really fine detail of molecules and proteins. So you know, atoms big, um, really small things, um, and that's been really helpful for us to increase our understanding of biology. And that brings episode two of the VCE Biology Podcast to a close. I'm Mr. Barlow, and thanks for listening.